Someday, in the not so distant future, it happens. The moment you realize you're ready for anything. Get a degree in emergency management from Jacksonville State University and be ready for where you're going. This is your Weather Extreme video for Sunday, January the 26th. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Thanks for tuning in, and we've got a complicated weather pattern ahead of us. Surface map this morning shows uh, high pressure off the southwest Atlantic coast, or southeast Atlantic coast, rather, out in the southwest Atlantic, with a storm system moving across the Great Lakes that's producing some serious problems for that area. In the upper atmosphere at 500 millibars, roughly 18 to 20,000 feet, we have the long wave trough position over the eastern half of the country, which has kept things rather cold, and uh, it's still in place, and we have a number of different uh, storm systems and disturbances rotating through that flow. Across central Alabama this morning, temperatures generally a little bit warmer than we saw yesterday morning as most areas were in the lower and mid 20s. There's still some spots getting down into the teens, but uh, we did have some cirrus clouds overnight and we're beginning to see some uh, development of uh, some precipitation over southeast Texas. Across the nation, there's uh, the storm system that is in the western Great Lakes is producing a number of winter weather advisories, including that orange area that uh, is uh, blizzard warnings for the area's parts of uh, uh, North and South Dakota, parts of Iowa, and uh, up into uh, parts of uh, uh Wisconsin. So uh, lots of lots of weather and uh, over in uh, parts of the Ohio River Valley, some additional winter weather advisories as well. QPF wise, we're not looking at a great deal of precipitation, but that precipitation could be in the form of snow and ice across parts of the southeastern U.S. So we have a very fluid situation, to say the least. One of those stay tunes. The good news is, with all the cold air, we don't have anything to worry about when it comes to thunderstorms. All right, we're going to look at the 06Z GFS model run. And there's the surface pattern for today, and you can see the thickness lines showing that we're warming up nicely, so we should uh, see temperatures climbing to something much more akin to seasonal averages. By uh, Monday, we see another cold air outbreak coming in, so we have a cold front moving across the southeastern U.S. as we see that surface low move up into southeastern Canada. In the upper atmosphere on Monday, uh, we still have that cold um, trough, the long wave trough position over the eastern half of the country, and uh, so that is keeping things rather chilly. We do see a number of disturbances that continue to rotate through it that reinforce that cold air. We see one of those on Tuesday, and so Tuesday is going to be a rather chilly cold day with temperatures uh, basically uh, dropping down into the lower teen values uh, on the order of 10 to 15 degrees, 16 degrees or so, and then uh, probably stay below freezing all of the day. And that's when things begin to get somewhat exciting as we see that we develop a bit of an overrunning situation developing as the upper flow comes out of the south just uh, off the surface. And that will allow uh, precipitation to break out along the Gulf Coast. And the question is going to be the form of that precipitation. We do see that on Wednesday, uh, midday, we have a, a strong short wave moving through the Mississippi River Valley and that will help to enhance the precipitation across the uh, frontal zone. And uh, so while the thicknesses are definitely too, uh, or the uh, air is drier across North Alabama and the thicknesses are certainly cold, it looks like the main threat's going to be south of uh, our area. Looking at uh, some other charts real quick, by midnight on uh, Tuesday night or early Wednesday morning, we see that the 850 zero-degree isotherm is down into South Alabama, and it certainly stays there uh, through um, morning on Wednesday. So the forecast for snow, um, the GFS is, I think, perhaps uh, the GFS in the European a little more reasonable with the snow amounts, although the GFS still rather high with the snow amounts across coastal areas of uh, South Carolina and North Carolina with values on the order of, uh, what's that, probably 14 to 16 inches of snow. And then uh, across our area, uh, values a little more reasonable, but some of those maybe uh, across South Alabama approaching four inches. The NAM is very, very optimistic and uh, producing on the order of a band of uh, 10 to 14 inches across the area from about uh, uh, vicinity of uh, 
Fort Walton, Destin area, all the way up into the coastal area of North and South Carolina. Now, our forecast is a little more realistic, I think, and here is the potential uh, we see for Tuesday night and into early Wednesday morning, one to two inches across the southern part of the state, so about an inch in the vicinity of Montgomery and the I-85 corridor, and then uh, a few snow flurries from uh, just north of Birmingham down to the vicinity of just south of Clanton uh, or perhaps near Prattville area. So certainly a very fluid situation that we'll be watching closely because minor changes will make a big difference in the forecast. That trough that uh, should help to increase the snow potential drives by on uh, Thursday, and that brings in another round of cold air as we see the 540 thickness line basically coming all the way down uh, into the area of uh, North Alabama, North Mississippi. The uh, pattern begins to flatten out on Friday, so we should see a fairly quick return of relatively mild air as we see that the uh, the 540 thickness line moves up into Tennessee, so uh, certainly sh uh, showing a warming trend. And actually, by Saturday, uh, with the possible approach of some uh, wet weather and some moisture, I think Saturday still looks to be dry, but we could actually climb into the lower 60s, at least the upper 50s, maybe even approach 60 for some highs. Pardon me, let's get to uh, Sunday. The pattern continues to flatten out as the GFS is forecasting a pretty strong uh, trough to develop over the western part of the U.S., and that trough uh, will probably result in good warming across the southeastern and eastern part of the U.S., and so we should see uh, some uh, wetness returning as we tap into that southwestern moisture around the second, uh, around Sunday, a week from today. Now, looking out into voodoo country, we do see another uh, fairly substantial trough coming across the central U.S. around the 5th of February, and that would uh, certainly set up the potential for some severe weather uh, possibilities across the eastern uh, half of the country. And then we get out to around the 10th, and we see that the pattern is flattened a little bit. Uh, but we still have a bit of a ridging from the Gulf up across the East Coast, and we still see a fairly substantial trough over the western U.S., so the pattern has shifted just a little bit. Well, that'll do it for the Weather Extreme video for this morning. James Spann should be back in the saddle again on Monday morning, and we'll be dealing with uh, and watching the, the evolution of this upcoming potential winter weather situation. So stay tuned to the blog for the latest information. I'm meteorologist Brian Peters. Have a great day, and Godspeed. Thank you for trusting us to be your number one source for news in all of Central Alabama. In back-to-back -back ratings periods, more people watched ABC 3340 than any other station in Birmingham.